I'm Guy Armitage, the CEO of Zealous. I'm a Caucasian 40-year-old man in a very white room with some art in the background. I am very close to the camera to hide a window behind my head. Today, I have the honor to speak to Michelle Bowen. Michelle has a wealth of experience in the creative sector, has held senior positions in strategic cultural agencies and at both the Arts Council and Craft Council. Most importantly, Michelle is now the director of UKNA, that's UK New Artists. In this short video, we'll be covering how UKNA supports new artists, their exciting new opportunities, and what makes an entry stand out for their call outs. Michelle, thank you so much for your time today. I really Hi. appreciate you asking us, Guy. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, no. And I um, I'm a sat in a room with a wonderful painting by an artist called Hertha Thompson behind me. I am a Caucasian woman in my 50s with brown hair. I'm wearing glasses and a black top. Perfect. I feel like we should start with the most logical question since I didn't do you justice in my introduction. Would you be able to tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and your background? Yeah, absolutely. So I have been in the um, arts and creative industries for probably about 30 years now, uh, working both in the public and private sector. But um, a thread that has kind of run through that kind of career, my career, um, has been supporting emerging talent. So when I worked in galleries, it was very much about talent spotting, finding new voices and celebrating that work at the Cross Council. Uh, at the time, it was called the Setting Up Grant. So again, it was spotting new talent and supporting that talent to blossom. The same at the Arts Council, supporting new voices through the, um, as it was called then, the Grants of the Arts. Um, I've since worked at studios, primary studios in Nottingham. I have also had the privilege of delivering the British Arts so Seven uh, here in Nottingham and have worked kind of across the country and internationally, kind of sharing the wonderful work that's produced in this country. Um, and yeah, and trying to give those who are just starting out a better, more solid path, advice, support, whatever it might be, opportunities in the best way that I can. And I guess that's where UKNA comes in. So perhaps could you tell us a little bit more about UKNA? Yeah, so UKNA is a kind of national organisation. We're based in the East Midlands, but we work nationally. We also work internationally, which I think is very important um, for the UK at the moment, for our wonderful creative industry to be celebrated. And now we are somewhat emerging from COVID. We hope to kind of reignite our international work a bit more. Um, we are a multidisciplinary creative development agency. So what does that really mean? Um, we, I kind of describe it like this, you know, we are not gallerists, we are not theatre bookers, we are not music producers, but we bring all of those people who work in that way, those artists, and one thing that they share is in here, and they have a wonderful for creative brain and they all share that however they articulate that through the genre that they choose to work in is 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 theirs however when you bring all of these creative thinkers into a space it's amazing engaging collaborative and exciting and we feel that we occupy a space which is about igniting that creativity keeping that creativity alive which is very important at the early stages of one's career you can get a bit lost you know you've left university uh, for those who went um, you may not be in a studio you may be working from home so how do you keep your kind of you know enjoyment and love and uh and and creativity alive so we try and find a space where artists can come together to do that that's fantastic and it's so great to bring these disciplines together and there's not many organizations that do that in in terms of supporting artists directly i is there any examples that you can give me or anything that you do uh so we, well, I mean, we talk about that um, we put together programs which bring artists together. So one of the best examples we run and the most productive, I think, for artists have been our weekenders. We've run six or seven. We've been in Blackpool, Skegness, St. Ives, London, 
um, <clears throat> all around the country and and we take a group of artists to spend two or three days together in a place that they may not have chosen to go to and is often outside of the um the kind of cultural hubs you know so what is that you can get from being in Skagness? You know, the landscape is extraordinary. The light is extraordinary. This kind of edge of the land, edge of the world sort of um, vibe that Skagness has can be, you know, really kind of exciting and interesting place to be. So again, it's you're there, you're with multidisciplinary artists, you're talking, you're networking, you're creating, you're thinking, you're in this space you wouldn't normally be in. And I, you know, I remember somebody who'd spent some time with us on one coming out and saying, you know, I was really about to kind of give up. I felt that I was, you know, I had nothing left to kind of give. And this has reignited everything, re-sparked, went back into the studio and, you know, back bedroom perhaps, and really started work and felt that I'd been given a kind of new lease of life. Um, and another lovely quote by somebody who's on of our on our Lincoln work at the moment. Every time I feel like I need you, UK new artists, you are there. You know, I'm out there and doing my thing, but sometimes I kind of get into a like a. I really need something. I really need refueling in a way, and I turn around and there's something I can do with you, and I get so much out of it, and off I go again. I thought that was lovely. So I think that kind of that's the support that we give in a very mental way. Um, obviously, there's more practical things. You are fed, you are housed, you are loved, you are cared for. Um, and there's often kind of bursaries and fees attached to the work to kind of support you being there as well as travel. So it's that kind of holistic view of how you can get the most out of being in this space. It, it sounds wonderful to be able to reignite people's passions and kind of refuel them and bring them on. Um, I'm aware that you might have other future opportunities that you might be able to tell us about. I, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm getting some spoilers here. I'm not sure. Well, you know, you're very lucky because um, I will share some of the things that are coming up. Um, one of the big ones we've got coming up uh, will be the Robert Walters UK New Artist of the Year Award, which we do very much in collaboration with collaboration with Zealous. Um, so the whole portal and process is, is working with you, which we enjoy. And I think it gives artists the kind of best platform to showcase their work. Um, the um, call for entries, which is free, um, opens on June the 29th, and then it remains open until midnight on Sunday, September the 3rd. So you've got a whole summer to get together to apply for that. It's an amazing opportunity. We work in collaboration with the Saatchi Gallery who hosts the event. Um, so, you know, artists who are selected can say that they've shown at the Saatchi, which is incredible. They all love that. Um, there's also a £10,000 first prize, a, a £5,000 second prize. All the work is picked up, insured, delivered, presented, and there's a small stipend for participation and showing your work as part of that. So, you know, whichever way you look, this is one of the biggest, most amazing opportunities. It's now going to be in its fourth year. Um, and um, yeah, we really unearth some exciting new voices and talent that we may not get to see. Um, it's open to all visual artists across all art forms and within the visual arts. Um, and year by year, the number of applications we get increases. So last year we got 1500. So I think we're possibly anticipating maybe over 2000. So it's competitive but it's free and it's worth it. I mean, a lovely story is last year's winner, Habib Hajili. Um, he applied one year, he didn't get anywhere. He applied the second year and he got into our 100 shortlist. And then he got, um, didn't get any further than that. The next year he applied, he got into the top 10. He got to show his work at the Saatchi and he won 10,000 pounds. So I think that shows don't give up. It's a journey, you know, just keep applying. There's different panels, there's different work, your work changes. So, you know, if you, if you apply and you don't get anywhere the first time, 
just keep applying. You never know. And I think that's a wonderful example of that journey. So we've got that. We've also got another bursary, which will be opening up next year. Uh, we've just awarded uh, the 23 to a wonderful artist called Parham Gamanda. Um, it's the 4C Group Bursary, um, and it's a £10,000 bursary to an, any artist in any art form. Um, and it's uh, also you get to participate in one of our other projects. They kind of support that. So that will be opening next year. We will thank it. Thanks to the 4C group. We also um, get to um, host one of our weekenders in uh, in a hope in a very, very nice hotel. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that. It's rather stupendous um, in <laughs> London where we have a weekend and we bring artists together in this quite unusual space of a hotel, you know, and um, this kind of transitory home for people and the role that artists can kind of bring and give and you know the expectations of the people staying there and the residents to the artist is is quite interesting so we do expect to hold that and then looking far into the future well certainly next year um, we'll be opening up our new artist collective um, for Derby. We're currently running that in Lincoln very successfully. So in Lincoln, there are 17 artists who are coming together, working collaboratively, networking and exploring the city of Lincoln in quite a kind of deep way. What does it give to them and what can they kind of take from it um so it's a very interesting exploration of kind of practice people and place and we're and we're going to de deliver that in 24 in derby so some those are some of the kind of things we've got in the pipeline we hope because we're in quite a few conversations with some other um uh, very very wonderful potential sponsors um um, who kind of see us as the kind of one-stop shop for amazing talent in this country, that there may be some other opportunity, support um, coming online as well. But So we're working very hard to kind of bring those opportunities to the fore in the coming months. So keep keep your eyes posted on our social media for that. That's, I was about to ask you that. That was the first question. It's where, where do I get to find out about all these opportunities? Because there's so, the so much. The best place, wherever is our social media. So, Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, obviously our website, but certainly social media is the first place you'll kind of see it. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and find out what's going on. It might link you into the website for further information. But yeah, those platforms are yeah the main resource that we use we do some kind to do some advertising um you know through the arts council website um through an and, and places like that but generally you'll see it here first on social media platforms is there a newsletter also or is it is it mostly we social media? do we we have sort of parked the newsletter for the minute okay. we did have one um we are currently looking at really you know what do we want to say and how useful is this that's sort of not on the social media platforms so I think we're just having a rethink about what that conversation is that we're having with artists through that um so yeah there may be a new refreshed and version coming out so again keep that space you can um join our mailing list for that on the website there's an opportunity to sign up um and you'll get that but for the moment it's on hiatus and I, it's it's so nice for you to be sharing the artist stories and to see that you're so close to to the talent that's sending you all this wonderful uh, artistry and and um, I don't like calling it content because it cheapens it but all this art. Yeah, um, no, I think we, we probably... do think of them as our family. I must admit, we when we refer to it, you know, you're part of our family. You know, it's it's a very yeah, it's at such an important stage for them, and you know, we just want to be there. Um, and sometimes just it's a hand in the back. You know, we're not doing anything. We're not paying for anything. It's just we're here. You know, we like something. We acknowledge, you know, that you can come to us if you need us. And that's very needed. I yeah. um, One of the de details that you covered is you get a lot of submissions. Um, yeah. And I think probably um, if I was to apply and I'm a terrible artist, so I wouldn't. Um, but if I was to apply, how would I get my my work to stand out? How, how could I what would you look for first? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a very good question. And I think it's something that, um, you know, 
yeah, you, you, many artists have to learn. Um, so I'll try. I'll try and be concise into kind of what are we when when a panel is convened to look at submissions and selections for opportunities. The the thing that's going to kind of come across very well is good images. You know, and that doesn't need to be a professional photographer. You know, camera phones now are so amazing. Um, but good, clean, crisp images which show the work. Um, you know, the cohesive group of images. So they're all from maybe the last two years. If you're photographing, try and keep to a neutral background. So then they all look they're from the same kind of person. Um, I think as a kind of, you know, that comes across very strongly because you're getting something very powerful then like, oh, right, okay, oh, gosh. Um, I think when a, a common mistake that artists can make is that they try and show the wealth of the stuff that they do. So sometimes it can be, here's a painting, here's a textile piece, here's my writing, when actually, whilst that's wonderful and we're very much supportive of interdisciplinary work, to, to capture that, it's better to kind of have a stronger approach. Otherwise, it looks like I don't know what I'm getting here. Where is this artist's voice? So I think initially it's, you know, it's getting across your voice and the quality of your work kind of quite quickly. Um, the other thing that I would say is we're often, you know, many artists are required to write about themselves and their work. Um Simpler is better. Um, you know, I've seen almost PhD worthy statements, which are, I'm the cognoscente and I pres presumably on the cognoscente. I've worked in this, you know, in this in this area for 30 years. And even I'm like, what does that mean? What's that word? Um, so I think for the, you know, sometimes it's just easier just to be very uh, plain and uh, very simple and just very descriptive about what's where you are, what are you doing, where you are, because um, people kind of engage with that more quickly. Um, mm. And this is you haven't got much time, you know, when you're on a selection panel, you know, there's, you know, things are moving quite quickly. If you've got 1500 applications to see, we've only got a limited time to do that. So, you know, the the more powerful and the quicker you can come across and then the simplest, strongest way is often the best way. Um, so, yeah, those are the things I would look for initially. A good voice, a strong voice with good with, through good images and a nice, simple, clear description of who you are, what you want to do and why you're doing it. You, you you also mentioned sort of the the multidisciplinary yeah uh, need to sort of the, the fact that you cover so much I imagine comparing an image to a piece of writing to a piece that must be quite difficult is there maybe other tips for other mediums or media that you might want to yes I mean obviously just uh, what we would do is when we convene a panel we make sure that there are experts from all of of the disciplines that we're likely to see so there is always somebody who understands you know that work uh, perhaps better than some other people on the panel I would say in terms of music and film sometimes it's better to have a um a kind of oh, what's the word I'm looking for a kind of um a snippet a preface a kind of you know um here's what this is really about uh, rather than the whole film um or the whole piece of music because what we often find was like we're starting like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're moving mm -hmm. along a bit mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure I've got to what I need to hear uh, so what is it that is kind of the you know the the snippet yeah, uh, the, the trailer uh, yeah, the trailer. Thank you. I know you mentioned the word earlier and then uh, I, I'd lost it. So I think giving us that appetite of I need to just see what this is about, you know, and I need to hear something and see something that's going to whet my appetite and then the link to the whole thing. So then we can watch that. But initially it's like, oh, what's this about? And, you know, if we're if you're losing us trying to find uh, uh, you within that within that tr within that a trailer can mm -hmm. often be the way to come across um with with um, spoken word it's often better or it gets more immediate um if you're able to film yourselves reading that um some people don't like doing that and that's fine some people just submit the work on paper in a document that's fine um but yeah it 
the it translates better or more immediately um, if you're able to um, share it with us in a spoken way, and then yeah. we can read it at leisure. Would it play against them if they if they had a mate who did like to be in front of the camera and speak it on their I behalf? I know. I mean, a lot of, and a lot of spoken word. Well, not spoken word. A lot of word artists or writers don't like to do that. So yeah. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sort of impact. But I think it allows us to kind of see perhaps what we're getting because sometimes it's spoken word is is audience focused. Mm. So it may be that if you don't enjoy that, what is it that you're looking for from us? How can we? Um, um, you know, support your writing. Um, um, I'd also say that sometimes, you know, we're able to bring in people who are um, have a have you know from writers agencies, from visual arts galleries, from theatres, who can then kind of also advise as well about you know doing that with theatre performances, the videoing. Um, if it, it tr just I appreciate you know money is tight this is a difficult mm. economy um but if you can try and capture the performance or the essence of a performance in the best way that you can um just think about how that's being viewed um and I'll give a poor example because we've seen some many wonderful ones you know with somebody in the back row looking at the performance which is quite a long way in the distance so you can't really see what's happening and then somebody walks in front of the phone so i what you know this is like hmm. to think mm. think about what the panel will be seeing you know and whilst we can often spot really talented work and think okay the, so the images aren't great and the, you know we can find something through it makes it much better if you're presenting what you do in the best way that you can mm -hmm. afford to do it you know and that we can see the performance we can hear the performance we can get a sense of what the performance is about um um yeah and sometimes that's not always the case I guess it's that sense of immediate an, an immediate understanding of an the immediate quality. understanding yeah, yeah. That's really important. I I, um, I don't know if this is kind of me going backwards, but obviously one, once they've got your attention and you're looking at it, what actually makes a good application? What 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 do you feel? I mean, this the story is something that you mentioned, that kind of sense mm. of style need for the artist to come strongly around one specific um one specific, I guess, theme that yeah. defines them. Yeah. Is was there anything else? I mean, I you know, it's I you know, it's <laughs> It's difficult, isn't it? Because some each each opportunity has different needs, and um, we're looking for different things as well. So, um, so let's say for the weekender, um, where we would um, be bringing a group of people together, which is not necessarily about let's say the Robert Walters, which is we're looking for the ten most exceptional artists that we can find. You know what I mean with the panel. Um, it's more nuanced than that. So often we will look at um, uh, how, what difference will this opportunity make to this artist? Is this something that will enable them to move forward? Um, is this something that we feel would give them, you know, um, you know that ignition maybe? Mm -hmm. um, so I think there is that sort of those nuances within what the application is. And I would sort of advise artists when it comes to that, you know, we will ask questions within application forms such as, you know, do you like collaborating, for example? And it's quite good if you then kind of say, I like collaborating because or, or I haven't collaborated before, but I really want to because I feel this will be important for my work. Read the question answer the question in the most honest and clear way that you can so we can get an idea of how we can help you if this is the right opportunity for you um because it may not be you know mm -hmm. and that's fine and we'd be wasting your time and our time um but if we can you know uh glean as much as we can we can find the right opportunity and pathway to support you through the different opportunities so, you know, for example, again, I'll always go to the kind of don't do this. Um, but for the Robert Walters, it very clearly states it's a visual arts opportunity. And, you know, we've had submissions from singers. So it's like, well, there's a basic kind of mm. 
but unfortunately this opportunity is not open to you know to singers so you've kind of sorry you know but you that reading of things looking for what people are looking for is it right for you uh you know is it the right art form is you know can you travel during those days is this something that you want to do can you meet the criteria and understand the criteria and feel that you're going to get something from that so i think there's that kind of there's a nuance that takes place with the panel about yeah would this how would this benefit the artist you know, and is this would be, this be the right opportunity for them? That, that's wonderful advice. I, I think what, one thing that we've noticed is sometimes people see a big number for a prize and then they decide to ignore everything below it. Yes. Um, so, so reading the <laughs> guidelines is obviously an important thing because you, you, you're you not going to select an apple when you're asking for oranges. That's, yeah. that's an obvious yeah. one. You know, and there are lots and lots and lots of opportunities out there, you know, and, and yes, it, you know, we appreciate it takes time to apply for things, but that's why you just need to not apply for everything, you know what I mean, but apply for the things that are, you feel are right and are going to be of benefit to you. But yeah, reading the guidelines, you know, that would be great. <laughs> I know this is a, a question off the cuff, but do, do you have an understanding of how long people tend to spend applying? Is that something that you've... I mean, I would say, you know, from from sort of verbal feedback, um, it would be anywhere from half a day to a day, depending on the on the on the request. I would say for the Robert Walters, which is the next thing we're going to be working with you on, you know, that's probably a half a day selecting the right images, you know, taking care that you're presenting, you know, a cohesive group. Are they the right things? Are they there is a theme for the Robert Walters, you know, and mm. writing how your work connects to that and then writing about yourself to give us the idea of who's this artist? What's their journey been like? You know, would this be a, an opportunity for them? Um so yes, you know, I mean, I I I know, you know, if I'm right, if I'm doing a job application, it's like it's hard to talk about yourself. It's hard to put that down. Like, well, what have I done? I've literally feel I've done nothing. You know, how am I describing myself? So it can take time, but I think just once you've kind of, you know, the, the, an artist statement can be reused and just, mm. you know. Um, rejigged for different purposes so once you've got your kind of template down your master um, then that can be reused for different things so making life a bit easier but initially you might be having to create all of this content to put into these applications but after you do a few you realize there's some common questions which you can kind of just relate mm -hmm. you know um, but yeah I would think half a day is is giving you enough time to draft it, look at it, get somebody to read it, um, you know, get somebody to look at your application, make sure that the images that you're putting up or the film works. Um, you know, we often get clips, but it needs a password and we haven't been sent the password. So then it's like, well, we'll, we'll try and text you, we'll try and reach out to you, but if we don't have it in the time frame. That's going to make our lives and your lives a bit difficult. You're missing out there. So little things like that, double check. Can they access this? Does this work? Is it in a format that can be viewed? Um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, in our experience also, it, it feels like it's it's a useful exercise to rethink about your practice and yeah. critically think about your direction, <clears throat> what you're trying to achieve. So although it is a half day to apply to something, it, it allows you to rethink about what you're doing and whether or not you're going the direction you thought you were going and really uh, develop that story. So that's yeah. fantastic. I think you've answered most questions. I think there's there's probably two more, one of which is is kind of a, a classic, which is, is there one piece of advice that, that you have for artists out there? Oh, gosh, I just, it is a classic. It's a classic. And I, and I like this is now me being unprepared. <laughs> oh, it takes half a day. Think about this. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I, I think there are two things that I would say is to firstly be open, you know, be open to the experiences that you that you could be involved in to working with others to hearing from other people to being part of other things you know 
being being a sponge taking this in how can it inform me sometimes it's going to be like that was pointless other times it's going to be god that's really amazing or sometimes it'll be an effect you down the line but be open be open-eared be open-eyed you know enjoy being an artist and i think the second probably a bit more kind of i don't know maybe not pragmatic but network meet people say hello introduce yourself connect to people I mean, you know, this process is is quite interesting in terms of making those applications, because I often say to people, OK, you may not um, get to the end point of what this prize bursary residency is. However, a panel of people that would never have seen your work have now seen your work. And they will kind of think about that. And often they will people reach out. That guy was really interesting or, you know, that person was very, those person's work was very interesting. I wonder if I, you know, they might go and look you up. They might start following you. So I think there is no bad thing that comes from it, you know, because you've been seen by people who wouldn't see you. Um, you can follow them. You can follow the judges. Most judges uh, panels will say who they are. Um, and it just builds up that relationship and that network and that being seen. And yeah, uh, it's I think people underestimate uh, the power of networking and the importance of um, reaching out to people, being, you know, sharing who you are. And, you know, just generally being a lovely, nice person um, who is, you know, and people then would like to support you and would like to help you. Um, and, and then off you go, you know what I mean? So I think those are the two words I would say. That's, that's fantastic advice. I, um, the last question, and you mentioned uh, keeping track of your opportunities was mostly social media. And hopefully we'll be putting the social media alongside this video so that people can, can go and have a look. Yeah. Um, but is there is there a way for them for artists to reach out to you? Is there a, um, hmm. a I mean, if you want to contact them? the organisation directly, um, we have an info at UKNewArtist.co.uk. Um, that's the kind of first portal, and then we can kind of then think, oh, who's right to kind of answer this, support this, get back in touch, um, and reach out to that artist and 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 kind of what they're looking for. So that's the way to kind of get directly in touch with the organization i'm sure madara will um add some information on the end as well about that but yeah that's the first port of call and Fantastic. again there's a contact sheet on our website it goes to the same email but yeah we can we respond to that as well that's really and knowing that you respond to that is half the fight yeah thank you so we much our best. <laughs> thank you so much michelle for your time thank you for sharing all this wonderful information about ukna and where the opportunities are and uh, we look forward to seeing Walter, the, the Robert Walters Prize going. And uh, yeah, Big here's to the future. Time. Well, thank you so much for the invitation and for sharing and also working with us to support, you know, getting us to, you know, artists on a platform which enables them their work to be seen in the best way that it can. So we really appreciate it. It's an absolute honour. Have a good bye. one. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, bye. take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.